Hi guys, welcome to another Cycroft episode. It has actually been quite a while, I think it has been three weeks since the last regular episode. Between we had the world tour with Mambo and the April Fool's video, so we're not restarting the server. Uh, some people actually fell for it, probably the people that subscribed recently. To everyone else, it's yeah, of course, outrageous if it would restart our world ever. Uh, talked so often about it, it would never restart, and yeah, definitely didn't change my opinion after playing the 1.14 snapshots. Okay, so we're back here in the regular world, and yeah, the reason why I'm not doing a lot of videos uh, lately is that we're completely stuck in the grind. Still working on Project Cyblock, uh, made huge progress by now. I would say we have about 85% done of the bedrock removal, as you can see. There's big strips of void now in between the bedrock, and yeah, if you can keep it up now, it should be finished within a week. I'm streaming daily almost, and uh, yeah, definitely hoping we can finish this in a week. Um, there's not much to say about it. We are also working currently on a design for the walls. And then, yeah, we can hopefully play Skyblock within at least this month of April. Alright, I got a little time lapse. Some people have requesting to see one. Uh, the first, like the bedrock strip, or 100 wide bedrock strip, was completely removed. So here we have a gap that is almost 200 blocks wide. And I got a time lapse of the removal of that, in the end, 5 wide strip here, basically in the middle. Alright, hope you enjoyed the time lapse. And you might have noticed that for the last machine, so the last five wide strip, we needed water on the right side as well. So usually we have the armor stand system on the left, it just gets moved with the machine, so we always have uh, water ready. But on the right, we can't really fit it in, there's other parts of the machinery in the way. So what we wanted to do here, since yeah, we don't have to do it 
too often. In total, probably going to be eight or nine times we have to do this. Uh, we need to generate some water here on the side in order to protect the machine from the explosions. Another alternative, of course, would be to get 1,000 obsidian blocks, place them down and mine them afterwards again. Uh, it's probably not that great of an idea. So it's much better if you use some kind of a flying machine, uh, also the frost walker. You would just create the water and keep it there stationary, run the machine, make another flying machine to move the water afterwards. All right, for the first machine, actually, XCOM uh, made the frost walker system, the, yeah, brought the ice in place. Um, but I can't reach him right now, so we're gonna go in a creative world and try to do this on my own. This shouldn't be too hard, so we just need to create a one wide strip of water, some of the frost walker mechanic. Okay, so let's try to make this machine. First thing we need to know is that we can't make a water source at Y0, as you can see here, because uh, yeah, there's no block below. It's not possible to have a block below, so water wouldn't spread to the side. So we need to make the water source, or the new water source block, one block higher, and in form of frosted ice that we can push down, and this way we can get fresh water source at Y0. So here's what I got so far. The idea is that we have a water source here and there. Then we're gonna push this section forward together with the armor stand and the frost walker boots. This is gonna frost the two ice blocks. Then we're gonna drag the front ice block along and it's supposed to melt immediately in a new position. And then we would form a new water source. In order to form a new water source, we also need blocks below. That's why we also drag uh, the slime block structure here along. And then we just need to push down one of the ice blocks here in the back at the right moment. So let's see if we get a water source with this contraption even. So this should be a water source right now. Uh, how can we check that? Yeah, it's definitely a water source. Okay, so this part works. Now we probably need to attach some kind of a sticky piston here. And yeah, I'm not quite sure about the delay. So, okay, we also need to power the sticky piston. Like that. Um, and where do we even push now? Probably here from the bottom. Okay. So we're gonna push from here. Not quite sure if we maybe need another bit of delay. Let's see. Um, if it's fine like that. So this piston here in the back is supposed to push down the frosted ice block just in the right moment. Not quite sure if the timings are right. Let's try it out. Okay, that seemed like it didn't work. Maybe because we didn't have a water source there yet. Let's try it again. Not quite sure what the problem is. It seems like the water just doesn't freeze. Or did we lose a water source? I think we are losing a water source all the time. Okay, I think I have to rebuild this a bit. Okay, that's the weirdest thing ever. So I did not rebuild anything and I just removed the piston that pushes down. But look where the frosted ice is generated. This is not supposed to be possible that we got a single frosted ice block. It's supposed to melt immediately because usually when a frosted ice uh, doesn't have two additional frosted ice blocks next to it, it's supposed to melt immediately. Anyway, this seems like it's actually quite convenient. <laughs> Let's see if we can maybe push this down with a bit more delay <laughs> and get this to work somehow. Okay, another one here. Okay, let's punch that one out for now. Let's try again. Does it not form ice because there's blocks above now? Okay, let's try it one more time now without the blocks. Okay, this is weird. Actually, never mind, I saw what I did wrong. Of course, those slime blocks here would also drag the frosted ice along 
Uh, so we would need to move the sticky piston somewhere else. Probably gonna cause a bit of a headache. Um, and just have the piston here that punches down. So something like that instead. Okay. But how do we push this section forward now? Also quite close to the push limit. I'll try to rebuild this a little bit. And it turns out my whole approach is kind of flawed. So what happens is uh, as soon as I would pull or move one of those frosted ice blocks, all of them will melt. So either I push down here, then all the frosted ice melts into water. Reason is quite simple. Uh, so if we push this one down, then the next one only has one neighboring frosted ice block melts and so on. We basically get a chain reaction. Same happens if we would pull from here, then this one melts and all the consecutive ones melt as well. And then I, can, then I can't push down here at the back. And I can't recreate that bug where we got one f uh, frosted ice block remaining. So that would have been really helpful now, but it uh, seems like we can't really rely on that. Okay, this is a little bit weird right now, because now we got enough water sources. We're actually doing correctly, but it doesn't work. For some reason, this piston here doesn't push down. Yeah, so saw this piston didn't get triggered. Could show it again, maybe without the water, but then the piston, of course, gets triggered. So I'm not quite sure what's the issue right now. Um, no idea. I forgot another water source here. Okay, as you can see, this piston here pushes down, but if there's an ice block in front, then it doesn't work anymore. Don't quite get that. If we would do here set block, lost the ice. I can definitely push that down. But why does it not work over there? Can't be the push limit. Alright, so this is a bit weird right now. I removed the observer for now, so we don't pull that section. As you can see, no chance to push down the frosted ice block. I think this is actually a known uh, behavior, but I forgot about it. I think we're using actually something similar for the vice through battery remover. So if there's water, we can't push down. Hmm, that's gonna make it a bit harder, I would assume. Okay, so what I got now is pretty awful, not gonna lie, but it works. So we just punch out the water under the frosted ice, so we can actually push it down. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it once more. Okay, now we got frosted ice, and this works. Not really nice, also again, in 1.12, random tick issues. So if the water happens to flow just the wrong moment, this could actually break. Um, but yeah, not gonna build a perfect machine this time. I just need something that works for now. I'm quite sure you can make this more elegant, but yeah, I'm quite content with that. Then there's one more issue. We got an additional water source on the side. Don't want that. So we're just gonna add Another piston right here to punch out the rest. And then this should work. We just need to add a clock at some point. And then this is decent, I guess it works. <laughs> as long as we don't get near it, if the random ticks, this could be an issue. But I'll just hope it works. Okay, let's see it. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to attach an engine and run it for maybe 100 blocks. So with the slow engine here, we got a working machine. It's not pretty, to be honest, but it's working. It's the important part. All right. Also, I don't have to build this like 100 times or 200 times like the big machine, so it doesn't matter much. Okay, then we can go back to survival and use this machine. But not so fast, because we actually have bedrock here, so I can't use the piston there. Oh boy. <laughs> so there's still the five white bedrock strip, of course. 
I was just too lazy to put it in. Started with it and then forgot about it. Okay. This seems like we have an issue now. We would need to have the piston there. Um, just think it might be possible. We just need to get the timings right. So we still need to punch out. Oh god, this is <laughs> this is becoming more and more awful. So I fixed all of the issues by just moving everything over to the other side. And it actually makes the machine look a bit nicer, which is good. Now if you would just make a proper engine, then this machine is actually almost acceptable. But as I said, it's working now, so let's go in survival and build this up. So back in survival, and I'm so mad right now because I restarted the wrong server. Meant to restart the Patreon server, but I unfortunately restarted the Cycraft Survival server. And yeah, it's so infuriating because this broke some Y0 battery removers that were running 200 blocks before they could reach the end. Uh, yeah, those machines are not meant to be unloaded, so they broke immediately once I reloaded them again and just parts yeah, got stuck. Okay, really unfortunate and this happened already, already a few times that we had to rebuild machines because they were either built incorrectly and blew up immediately or ran into an unloaded chunk because I forgot to add bots. Uh, there's also really a small chance a lightning strike could take one machine out. So in that case if this happens then turn out that it's faster or less effort to just completely remove it and rebuild it instead of trying to salvage parts of the machinery and build up the rest around it because yeah the way this machine breaks is that uh, certain parts get stuck and other parts get pushed forward and uh, it's just such a pain to figure out what to keep and what to replace so it's probably better if I just remove it and build it up again but I also got the time down to build one of those machines to nine minutes and five seconds Really proud on that. Uh, of course, this is the best time, but usually in 10 11 minutes, I can build such a machine, so it's not that much effort. Probably gonna lose 40 minutes here because of this unfortunate mistake. All right, the other thing which, of course, I can't do now is build the water generation machine here for the site that we've just designed because yeah, this was actually the strip of bedrock that needed it next, but now the machine is still in the way. So I would. Yeah, we need to rebuild this machine, run it to the end, and then remove it, and then we can build the water generation machine. Uh, this is unfortunately not something I can do in this episode because I'm running out of time. Still want to release this video today, so I'm gonna do it. Uh, yeah, in the week uh, between the episodes is enough time. Okay, that's it for this episode. The next one we're gonna probably work on the crafting system again. Another project we started a few weeks ago, also not a lot of progress has been made there, uh, but now we actually crafted a million pistons, Oreo did it mostly, so there's no immediate need for a faster crafting system, but it would be nice to have it anyway, so that's the plan for the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next one, bye bye.